Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, insha'Allah today's khutbah is about al-mu'min, the believer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, قَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلُ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ The bad ones say, we believe. So Allah is telling them, say, you do not believe, but say, we submit. For faith has not entered into our heart, into your hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is differentiating between being a Muslim and being a mu'min. There is two separate things, a Muslim and a mu'min. And the Prophet والسلام, said, the Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand the people are safe. And the believer is the one from whom the people's lives and wealth are safe. So if you look at that hadith, the Muslim are safe from things of less importance. I'm safe from his tongue. Worst case is gonna bad mouth, me, bad mouth me, backbite me, say bad things about me. That's what he can do. And the Muslim is not gonna do that. And at the same time, he's not gonna beat me. So I'm safe from his hand. He's not gonna punch me, whatever. But the believer, I trust him with things that are much higher. I trust him with my life. Nobody will waste their life. Nobody will jeopardize their life. But if it's a, mu a believer, a mu'min, then yes, I trust him with my life. And the most important things for people after their life, the majority of the people, is their wealth. So you trust him with the most too important thing for you. So that tells you the mu'min, the believer, is much higher than the Muslim, just being a regular Muslim. And we have that long hadith that was narrated by Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. And it talks about when Sayyidina Jibreel, Gabriel alayhi salam, came down in the form of a man. And he sat down with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. He walked into the masjid of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, sat in front of him, and all the companion can see him. A man sitting in front of the Prophet asking him questions. And he's asked him, O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. The Prophet said, Islam that you witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and perform salat, prayers, and pay the zakat, and fast Ramadan, and perform hajj, pilgrimage, to the house if you can find a way to it. So he defined to him what is Islam, being a Muslim. Then he asked him, tell me about Iman, belief, the believer. So he answered, it is that you believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers and in the last day and in faith, Qadr, both in its good and its evil. You notice the difference between the two? The Muslim is a person that you can see all the things external. Everybody can say, I can, he's not a Muslim, he's a Muslim. I saw him pray, I saw him fasting, I saw him pay zakah. It's all external things. That's what the Muslim is, external. But the believer is not only external, but internal. He believes in things, there is no proof for it. There is no proof. There is no proof for you that you believe in the angels. None of us have seen an angel. There is no proof except the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no proof that there is books. I didn't see the books come down. I didn't see them. I was not sitting next to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam when the books came down and I saw it. I didn't. But I trust the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I didn't see the messenger. I didn't see any of the messenger. But I believe in all of that, even though I didn't see it, I believe in my heart. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so, and I believe whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ رُسُلِهِ the messenger believes in what has been revealed to him from his Lord. And the believers, they all believe in Allah 
and his angels and his books and his messengers. We make no difference between any of his messengers. They believe in the things they have never seen. Believing in the unseen, that's the difference between the believer and the Muslim. You don't have to have a proof. You believe because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it. And if you think about it, if you're not a believer and you don't believe in the day of judgment, in paradise and in hell, you don't believe in all of that, then if somebody offended you or somebody did harm to you, it's not fair. It's not fair, you know, he got away with it. But when you believe in that, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he doesn't get you justice in this life, guaranteed he's going to get it for you on the day of judgment. If you, don't, if, if you are a person who doesn't believe in day of judgment and paradise and hell, you are going to do whatever you can get away with. You don't care. Whatever you can get away with it. You can cheat, you can lie, whatever, as long as the police doesn't arrest you. And if they arrest you, you say, I'm not going to do it again. But you know, there is no harm. What, what's the worst case? What can happen? Nothing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jazakallah khair. Now I can keep my voice down a little bit. <laughs> so I don't annoy the first row. <laughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ I'm talking about the believer. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ Those who believe in the unseen, and keep up prayer and spend out of what we have given them and who believe in that which has been revealed to you and that which was revealed before you and they are certain of the hereafter so the believer is both he believe in that he believe in all the unseen but he's performing the salah the zakah the fasting all of that so not all muslims are believers not all of them but all believers are Muslim. Because they will do both. But Muslim, yes, I'm doing all the five things. But I don't know, maybe his heart is not really convinced. And he's not really, his faith is not strong enough to believe that there is angels. He's not strong enough to believe whatever else that Allah told us that you cannot see with your own eyes. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the believers are much higher status than just being a regular Muslim. Allah says, وَسَوْفَ يُؤْتِ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا And Allah will grant the believers a great reward. So the believers are not just going to be rewarded, great reward. Muslims will be rewarded. Because Allah asked you to be a Muslim, do the five things, and you did. But the believers... There is different reward for them, much higher. And not just in the hereafter, but they will be rewarded in this life as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ أَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And it may be that you dislike a thing while it is good for you. And it may be that you love a thing while it is evil for you. And Allah knows while you do not know. If you are not a believer and you read that verse, it doesn't make sense to you because the way you see it, when the result comes out, whatever comes out to you, and it's not what you hoped for, you are depressed. You lose your mind. You commit suicide. Because, wait a minute, you know, you tell me it's good for me. Look at 2008. 2008, all stocks, the stock market went down. Down, way down. People lost 70% of their wealth. Home prices plummeted, just went down. People who had a home that's worth a million became worth 400,000. Everything was bad. And then you tell me it's good for you? You must be crazy. What does it mean it's good for me? 
So people like that who didn't believe, many people got depression. I read about some people who committed suicide because they lost their fortune. They couldn't take it. But the believer, he knows that whatever the result may be, in the long run, it's good for him. And that's what happened. The people who believe, who stuck with it, their money in the stock market went back to where it was and much higher. And if you lost your job and you're a believer, you know there is something good coming after it. Because you're a believer. If you lost your wealth, you know you're going to get something better. Because you're a believer. You're always at peace. You are not really losing your mind. You feel comfortable. Because you know things are going to get better. That's the promise of Allah. And I'm a believer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل فانقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفضل لم يمسسهم سوء واتبعوا رضوان الله والله ذو فضل عظيم He's talking about the believers, believers Those to whom the people said Surely men have gathered against you Therefore fear them But this increased their faith And they said Allah is sufficient for us and he is the best protector. So they returned with grace and favor from Allah and no harm touched them and they followed the pleasure of Allah and Allah is the owner of great bounty. The believer, everybody told them there is people gathering for you. All the tribes are gathering for you. You are few in numbers. There is no way Ten people are not going to beat a hundred. No way. And that's what people told them. But the believers, they said, that's what Allah promised us. He promised us we're going to be tested. He promised us that we're going to have challenges. And He promised us great reward. So the things that the people were telling them to scare them, it made them stronger. That's what Allah is saying. Their faith became stronger. And they became stronger believers. And Allah is saying, and then after that, because they were believers, the reward comes. They went back with great rewards from Allah. They won. They won. And not only in this life they won, but they won the hereafter as well. So that's a believer. The believer, you stand and you affirm. It doesn't matter. Nothing will shake you. It doesn't matter. You see things, everything is dark. Everything is hopeless. It doesn't bother you. Because Allah promised you that He's going to relieve you. He's going to give you ease after that. There is a popular expression here in America that everybody says. That popular expression everybody says, I'll believe it when I see it. Anybody you tell him, oh, I'll believe it when I see it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the opposite. If you believe it, you will see it. You have to believe in what Allah is saying to see the result. If you don't believe, then you're on your own. But if you believe, now you put your trust in the hands of Allah and Allah will deliver. Allah will never let you down. But you have to believe first. You cannot say, when I see it, oh Allah, when you get me out of my trouble, then I believe that you can do it. No. Believe that Allah can get you out of your trouble. He will get you out. So we are the opposite of that expression. If I believe it, I will see it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala inna nasr Allahi qareeb. Surely the victory of Allah is near. If you believe in that, no matter how many enemies you have, no matter who's harming you, no matter what your problem are, if you believe that the victory of Allah is coming, it will come. But if you don't, and you say, it's too difficult. Things are, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. You have no idea. I have problems. I have financial problems. I have family problems. I have work problems. I have problems like you won't believe it. So how, well, how do you think I'm going to get out of all of that? You don't believe it, then you're on your own. You may get out, you may not get out. But if you believe that Allah is going to help you, you will get out of your problems. But you have to believe it. You have to believe it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
Allah brings about ease after difficulty. Same thing. We are going to all face difficulty. If you sit and you say, there is nothing I can do. <coughs> that, is, that is my luck in this life. You know, there is, Allah just forgot about me. If you do that, then nothing will happen. You may get out of your problem, you may not. But if you believe that ease is going to come after difficulty, Allah will deliver. Guaranteed. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be next week. It may not be next month. But He will deliver. And He will deliver at the perfect time for you. It may not be next week. If He delivers to you, it may not help you. But maybe if He delivers it for you three months from now, it makes a big difference with you. So Allah will deliver. When? It's a matter of the decision of Allah to choose for you the perfect time for you. There is a brother in the masjid here. And that brother lost his job. And for almost two years, he couldn't find a good permanent job for almost two years. And then one day he heard in the khutbah, he heard that trust Allah. If you trust Allah, he's going to solve all your problems. That day he went home and he told his wife, I trust Allah. Allah is going to solve my problem. You should not worry. Allah is going to take care of us. They had debt. They borrowed from everybody. Things were difficult. But he came with a good spirit and belief in his heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to solve his problem. He swears by Allah. The next day he got a call from one of the top high tech company in this area. And they asked him to come for an interview. Three days later he had a job with them. He believed. When he believed Allah changed everything. Allah changed everything after he believed. He, almost two years. He was just sending a resume. Why it's not working? I got so many interviews. Nobody's hiring me. The day he believed, next day he had the interview. Three days later he has a job. So you have to believe. And Allah will deliver. Some people and they are in trouble. Or something's bothering them. Or worrying about something. Immediately they reach for a cigarette. Or for alcohol. Or for drugs. People do that. But the believer, when he's in trouble or worried about anything, he reaches for Allah. Immediately he reaches for Allah. Because Allah said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ اِدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord says, call upon me, I will answer you. He knows, Allah promised, make dua to me, I will answer you. And as I said, at the right time, Whenever is the perfect time for you, that's when Allah will answer. So he always, he's not out of worry. He doesn't need anything to cover his pain, drugs, alcohol. He doesn't need that. He knows Allah is going to take care of him. People who believe, people who have strong belief, change the world. Our Prophet ﷺ started with one person. Today there is 1.8 billion Muslim. And at the beginning of Islam, the people of Quraysh were, study, were starting to get fed up with the messenger and the message of Islam. So they wanted to kill him. So they went to his uncle. And his uncle was one of the chiefs. And they went to him and they said, either you tell your nephew to cool it down, just keep it down, you know, and not, not go out and start to spread the message, or leave him to us and we'll take care of him. So his uncle said, I'll talk to him. So he went and talked to the Prophet ﷺ and told him, can you cool it down a little bit? So the Prophet ﷺ answered, he said, O oh uncle, by Allah, if they place the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand to leave this cause, I would never do it until Allah has made it victorious or I die for it. <coughs> belief. He believed. Most of us will say, I don't want trouble. You know, those are the whole tribe. There is so many people against me. So maybe I'll cool it off. But belief, he believed. And today, 1.8 billion. And it's going to be more and more and more until the day of judgment. Muslims are going to continue to increase. It started with one person with belief. 
And somebody may say, but you're talking about the Prophet والسلام, Of course, you know, he's a Prophet, he's, Allah is supporting him, Allah is guiding him. But you know, regular people like that, regular people with, whose belief changed the world. You take Steve Jobs, the one who's head of Apple. Steve Jobs, when he started Apple, he had a, a belief that there will be a computer on every desk. That was his belief, a computer on every desk. He changed the whole world. Now today, you have computer everywhere, not only on every desk, every home, and multiple computers. It started with a guy that had a belief, a computer on every desk. Take Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, he was being abused, tortured by police and all of that. But he believed that one day, white people and black people would be treated the same. We came a long way. We still have a long way to go. But it's, it had a belief. And he stood up for his belief. And he changed the world. So if you have a strong belief in whatever you're doing, whatever you believe in, you're going to make a big difference. Versus you're just moving along in this life. But belief, if it's not supported with action, it's just a dream. Belief has to be supported with action. True believers do everything they can. The Prophet ﷺ didn't sit back and say, I believe in Allah. He was abused, he was tortured, he was insulted, garbage was thrown at him, all of kind of things, rocks thrown at him. He did everything. Steve Jobs, same thing. Martin Luther King, same thing. But if you're a believer, you have to support it with action. Not only your heart, but show what's in your heart and your action. Belief guides your life. If you believe you are a failure, you're going to fail. If you believe you're a success, you will succeed. If you believe you cannot do something, you're not going to be able to do it. If you believe you can do it, you will do it. Your body, your brain, your emotions, all of them will be guided by your belief. All, every part of your body, your belief is going to guide it. And if you don't have the belief, every part of your body is going to fight you. You don't have the belief, oh, I'm too tired, I cannot do it. Oh, it's too difficult. Oh, you know, I, I don't like it. But if you have belief, then they will stand be behind you. When you believe in whatever you're doing, it gives you confidence. It gives you power, creativity, and toughness. You are going to be faced with hurdle, with difficulty. You are going to be knocked down. But when you have a belief, you get up, you bounce back, and you keep moving because you believe. There was a research done in one of the major hospitals. They went to a clinic and they brought a group of people who had bleeding ulcer in the stomach. Bleeding ulcer in the stomach is very painful. And they brought that group and divided them into two groups. And they came with something called placebo. Placebo is fake pills made of sugar. They have no effect at all. And the first group, they gave them those pills and they told them, this is a new drug. We have no idea if it works, it doesn't work. We have no clue. It might work, it might not work. But we, we want you to try it. And they gave them those pills regularly. The other group, they gave them the same pills. And they told them, this is a new miracle drug. After you take it, you are going to feel great relief. You are going to feel no pain. It's going to be fantastic. After almost a week, they went and looked at the first group. That They told them, we don't know if it's going to work or not. 25% of the people felt better. No pain, nothing. They felt relief. The other group, 70% felt better. The difference between the two groups is the power of belief, the power of Iman.